rephrased or reformulated uh, in a very consistent manner with democratic values and ideals. Uh, Article 42, uh, which uh, stipulates the right to education, uh, says that uh, only Turkish can be instructed as uh, a mother language in schools. Uh, more precisely, the article reads, no language other than Turkish can be instructed as mother language in uh, schools uh, in Turkey. So th this is a very important uh, stipulation regarding the Kurdish issue we uh, are facing or we have been facing for some decades now. Uh, because recognition of uh, a distinct group within the Turkish uh, society, like in the recognition of Kurdish identity, uh, requires the recognition of Kurdish language. Uh, this has been accomplished in a certain way. Uh, a new law passed in 2005 by the parliament. But the title of that law regards uh, languages other than Turkish as different languages or languages used by Turkish citizens uh, in their daily lives as a matter of uh, traditional uh, or customary practice. So, uh, I mean, uh, recognition of the existence of different mother languages uh, in Turkish society is an important step for furthering democratization in, in Turkey, and this article simply is a block uh, on that road. Article 66, which defines uh, Turkish citizenship, is also problematic uh, for a democratic uh, society because uh, this article says uh, everyone who is tied to the Turkish state <coughs> by or through the bonds of citizenship uh, is called uh, a Turk, is a Turk. Uh, here I think we have a difficulty, a linguistic difficulty. Uh, I mean, there's a difference between Turkish and English uh, in many ways, in linguistic ways, but uh, in, in Turkish we, uh, when we say Turk, uh, we sometimes refer to the legal bond between the individual and the state but sometimes we refer to uh, ethnic uh, identity when we are speaking about Turks in Cyprus, for example, or uh, Turks in uh, Turkic uh, republics. I have two minutes, okay. <laughs> I'm just finishing. But when we, I mean, I looked up the dictionary several times uh, for the meaning of Turkish or English or German or French, and uh, when you look up the English dictionary, for example, saying what the, the meaning of Turkish, that means uh, belonging to uh, the belonging to the inhabitants of Turkey. So uh, the reference in, in English language, when you say German, is to the land, to the territory, not to ethnicity. But in, in, in Turkey, when we say Turk, it might refer to the territory, the territory of the Turkish state, or it may refer to the ethnic state. And this is the only article uh, in which mention has been made Turk, not Turkey, not, not the territory, but to, to some kind of a formulation that at least implies an ethnic reference. Because the first article, uh, and this article, Article number one I mean, says, Turkiye devleti bir cumhuriyettir, which means the state in Turk, in the territory, territory of Turkey. It's, it's not the Turk, Turk devleti, but it's Turkiye devleti, is a republic. But Article 66 doesn't mention Turkiye devleti, it mentions Türk devleti. So it, it has a strong reference to the ethnic the dimension of the word Turk or Turkishness. So this practically alienates most uh, Kurds and uh, non-Turkic speaking uh, members of or groups in Turkish society. Uh, 
There are several other problematic areas ranging from Article 19, uh, Article 69, which uh, includes reasons for party closure, which, uh, in that respect, Turkey has a very bad record, the uh, record in uh, Strasbourg court. There are also some other articles like 91, 121, etc., that allow uh, government go governments to enact certain decrees in times of states of emergency, and they might suspend the exercise of fundamental rights and liberties, and those governmental decrees at times of states of emergency cannot be brought into, or we cannot file a case against those decrees in the constitutional court for their unconstitutionality. Uh, also, there are several problems uh, pertaining to the organization of state institutions, separation of power system. Uh, for example, Turkey has always had a parliamentary uh, government, but uh, president, uh, in the current constitution, the president has uh, powers exceed, exceeding the limits a president must have within parliamentary democracy. So if Turkey wants to continue uh, in the parliamentary direction, the powers of the president must be restricted, uh, further restricted, because he has powers, but he is unaccountable. Uh, whereas, I mean, you might think of uh, switching to presidential form of government in Turkey, but in that case, we also have to discuss then uh, a regional system of government that might be close to uh, a kind of federation, etc. So these are the problems that might be mentioned when we are talking about uh, Turkey's need for a new constitution. And, and I think I will have some time to discuss yes. further details. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. And we will come back to, uh, to this in the discussion. We'll have plenty of time. And I also have to say it's, it's very difficult for me to be in my role of saying one minute's uh, <laughs> But uh, at this point, if uh, we can turn to the, uh, which is, a, I think, a, a good transformation here, uh, to looking at the transformation of civil-military relations in Turkey uh, as they have direct bearing um, 